Hello, my name is Tatiana Kachkovskaya, and I'm presenting the talk entitled Prosodic Phrasing in Russian Spontaneous and Red Speech Evidence from Large Speech Opera. This research was carried out at the Department of Phonetics, St. Petersburg State University, Russia. The phonetics laboratory within this department has a long tradition of research in spontaneous and red speech and a lot of experience in recording and organizing speech corpora. This paper is of descriptive nature. Initially, it was intended to include average data and distribution of the values, mostly for future reference. Specifically, we are interested in duration of international phrases and duration of pauses and length of international phrases measured in word-like units. As north of the major boundaries are marked by real pauses, we are interested in how frequently it occurs. Finally, we analyze the distribution of melodic patterns. Our results are corpus-based. On the left, you can see the description of the red speech corpus, and on the right, a description of the spontaneous speech corpus. Both of the speech corpora were developed at our laboratory in recent years. The corpora differ in the number of speakers, but the sizes of the corpora are comparable. Both corpora contain prosodic annotation using a similar annotation scheme. The annotation enable, enables us to easily compute average IP length in word-like units and the distribution of melodic types. For duration measurement, only the corpus of red speech had enough segmentation data, since it is segmented into IPs and pauses. For the corpus of spontaneous speech, we had to run an additional automatic procedure to detect silent intervals. Prosodic hierarchy, as described in works by Elizabeth Selkirk or Marina Nesper and Eren Fogel, is not well described for Russian. This is why we are using the following scheme which is traditional in Russian phonetic literature. The main prosodic units are utterance, IP and clitic group, without any other units lying between these in the hierarchy. In the example here, we see the utterance Babushka Marusi идет по дороге, pronounced as two international phrases and four clitic groups. The last clitic group is made up of a preposition and a noun. So, international phrase, the Russian term is the syntagm, is defined here as a unit very close to the term tone unit, used in major works of the British school. It contains only one main accented word, rarely two, and it is perceived as a whole due to global declination trends and boundary effects. Clinic group, in Russian called the phonetic word, is roughly speaking a content word plus the surrounding clitics. Prosodically, it has only one word stress, rarely two, and perceived as a whole due to the vowel reduction pattern and boundary effects. Now, let's begin with the results. Here we provide data for IP duration. As spontaneous speech contains quite a lot of hesitations, it is an open question whether they are part of the adjacent IP or not. In red speech, this issue is out of discussion, as there are no hesitations at all, at least in prepared reading and at least in our material. Average IP duration distribution for red speech is presented on the left. For spontaneous speech, we present both variants. Without hesitations, mean IP duration is obviously lower. And only in this case, this parameter differs between spontaneous and red speech, with a p-value of 0 0.002 and difference in duration around 250 milliseconds. If we consider hesitations as part of the IP, the difference is not statistically significant, which is an interesting result. If we assume that average IP duration is a feature of human nature or language, it becomes clear why people add hesitations in natural speech. For rhythmical reasons. 
Here we present results for IP length. In terms of IP length measured in clitic groups, the two types of speech differ. In red speech on the left, IPs are longer than in spontaneous speech. And this is mostly because spontaneous speech has higher percentage of short one-word IPs, 30 against 16. For statistical analysis, we performed a more detailed comparison. We compared each speaker from the red speech corpus with each speaker from the spontaneous speech corpus, controlling for the factors of age and gender. We found that the difference between the two types of speech is speaker-specific. The majority of speakers confirm the general trend, but there are exceptions. A few speakers use rather short IPs in red speech, which is unusual, and some speakers use rather long IPs in spontaneous speech, which is untypical as well. Now, let us talk about the nucleus. Analyzing the placement of the nuclear accents and the melodic patterns, we found several striking differences between the two types of speech. 1. In Russian, most nuclear accents fall within the last clitic group. Cases of displaced nuclei are certain types of questions on the one hand and various cases of inverted word order. Our data show that in spontaneous speech, nuclei are more often moved leftwards. That is, the most meaningful word is moved closer to the beginning of the IP. This demonstrates specific topic comment organization of spontaneous speech. 2. In spontaneous speech we found much fewer low falls. Typically, they are used in complete sentences and at ends of paragraphs. Our data show that neither of these are typical for spontaneous speech. And 3. Switching register to low is used in parentheticals, comment, author's remarks, and so on. That is, this is a way speakers can convey information structure. Our data show that parenthetical intonation is used in spontaneous speech more often. But so far, this is a rather weak conclusion as in red speech, this percentage depends on the type of text. Mean silent interval duration does not show statistically significant difference. However, the variation in spontaneous speech is higher. That is, there are some speakers that have very short silent pauses, as well as some speakers that use extremely long silent pauses. Note that the average value of 808 for spontaneous speech is actually very high, it's almost one second. The ratio between the number of silent pauses and the number of IP boundaries show a very similar picture. The difference is not statistically significant, but the variation is higher in spontaneous speech. We might hypothesize that in terms of pausation, some people speak just the way they would be reading a text, and this might be due to their language experience. However, this claim requires further research. To sum up, we found differences in IP length and IP duration, and also several differences concerning the placement of nuclear accent and the use of melodic patterns. Pause duration and the frequency of silent pauses at IP boundaries do not differ significantly. But in spontaneous speech, the speaker variability is much higher. This is all for now. Thank you for your attention.